The earliest chapters of European prehistory are shrouded in mysteries that have long fascinated researchers and laypeople alike. Beneath layers of sediment and millennia of geological change, the relics of a time when human survival was marked by astonishing practices, practices that blur the lines between ritual necessity and the raw brutality of nature have come to light. Excavations across the continent have revealed evidence that cannibalism was not merely an aberration of desperate moments, but rather an integrated aspect of the lives and beliefs of some of Europe's first inhabitants. Detailed studies of cut marks on bones, DNA analyses, and contextual examinations of the sites where these remains were found have led scientists to re-examine the evolutionary, cultural, and even spiritual dimensions of early human societies. In the dark, damp recesses of the Goyot Caves in Belgium, where time seems to have stood still for tens of thousands of years, archaeologists uncovered the bones of Neanderthals, our enigmatic cousins whose fate was sealed by a combination of environmental challenges and competitive pressures from emerging Homo sapiens. The remains, estimated to date from around 45,500 to 40,500 years ago, bear unmistakable evidence of systematic butchery. Researchers identified cut marks that suggest deliberate skinning, defleshing, and the extraction of marrow, actions that mirror the treatment of animal carcasses. Such findings have led to the hypothesis that these early Europeans in their struggle for survival in a hostile Ice Age landscape resorted to cannibalism not solely as a last-ditch effort in times of famine, but as a culturally embedded practice. The analysis of tool marks and breakage patterns on the bones implies a sophisticated, albeit grim, understanding of animal butchery applied to human bodies. A stark reminder that even the most advanced societies have harboured practices that, in today's eyes, appear both horrifying and taboo. Moving away from the cold, dim interiors of Belgian caves, another startling discovery emerged from Guff's Cave in England. This site, dating back to the Magdalenian period approximately 14,700 years ago, provides an even more dramatic illustration of cannibalistic rituals among early modern humans. The human remains discovered here show evidence of defleshing and dismemberment, and in one particularly striking case, a human skull was deliberately shaped into a cup-like form after the removal of soft tissues. Such manipulation of human remains raises profound questions about the underlying motivations behind these acts. Were these acts of cannibalism driven by the dire imperatives of survival, or did they hold a deeper symbolic meaning, a ritualistic attempt to absorb the life force or honor the dead? The evidence painstakingly gathered by archaeologists and anthropologists, suggests that these actions may have served multiple purposes, from nutritional supplementation during periods of scarcity to complex mortuary practices that conveyed beliefs about life, death and rebirth. Farther east in the winding corridors of Poland's Mazika Cave, researchers discovered the remains of both adults and children, dating back some 18,000 years. The bones, marred by cut marks and fractures that unmistakably indicate systematic processing, tell a story of both violence and survival. Unlike isolated incidents of cannibalism documented in later historical records, the evidence from Masika Cave points to a broader, more sustained practice that may have been intertwined with intergroup conflict. Some scholars argue that these remains represent victims of violent encounters, individuals whose flesh was consumed by captors as an act of dominance or a means of extracting every possible resource from a fallen enemy. This form of cannibalism, deeply rooted in the social and environmental pressures of the time, highlights the precariousness of life in prehistoric Europe, where each encounter could mean the difference between life and death, civilization and savagery. Across the continent, sites such as Herxheim in Germany have further enriched our understanding of these macabre customs. At Herxheim, archaeologists uncovered the remains of over a thousand individuals dating back approximately 7,000 years. The assemblage of bones, arranged in what appears to be a ritualistic deposition, bears clear evidence of systematic processing. The uniformity of the butchery marks, the careful separation of flesh from bone, and the subsequent arrangement of the skeletal remains indicate that the acts were not haphazard or opportunistic. Instead, they appear to have been conducted according to a set of ritualized practices 
possibly as part of communal rites that sought to dehumanize enemies, appease deities, or even absorb the qualities of the deceased. The sheer scale of the findings at Herxheim challenges modern perceptions of Neolithic communities as uniformly peaceful or solely agrarian, revealing instead that they were capable of extreme and sometimes collective violence that included cannibalistic practices as an integral element of their cultural identity. DNA analyses have played a pivotal role in unraveling these complex narratives. Advances in genetic sequencing have allowed scientists to trace not only the physical, but also the cultural and biological connections between ancient populations. For instance, genetic markers extracted from remains found in European caves have provided evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens. The presence of Neanderthal DNA in modern non-African populations, amounting to approximately 1 to 2 percent, hints at a history that is as interwoven as it is violent. While some researchers propose that this genetic mingling may have included instances of peaceful coexistence and cultural exchange, others suggest that it could have been accompanied by acts of violence and even cannibalism. The genetic evidence thus adds another layer of complexity to our understanding of early human interactions, suggesting that the boundaries between hunter and prey, or between friend and foe, were often blurred in the crucible of survival. The shock of these revelations is compounded by the context in which they occur. Cannibalism in most modern societies is met with immediate repulsion and moral condemnation. Yet, when viewed through the lens of prehistory, these acts acquire a different, if equally unsettling, significance. In times when food resources were scarce and the environment posed relentless challenges, the consumption of human flesh might have been a pragmatic, if desperate, strategy. However, the evidence indicates that these practices were not limited to moments of sheer desperation. In many instances, the treatment of the remains suggests a degree of deliberation and ritualization that transcends mere survival. The shaping of a skull into a drinking vessel, the careful defleshing of bones, and the strategic placement of remains within the confines of a cave all point to a set of cultural practices that were deeply symbolic. These rituals may have served to honor the dead, to assert control over the forces of nature, or even to foster a sense of unity and identity within a community facing constant threats from both within and without. Anthropologists and archaeologists continue to debate the underlying motivations behind cannibalistic practices in early Europe. Some argue that cannibalism was primarily a survival strategy, a response to periods of extreme environmental hardship, such as prolonged glaciations, famines, or sudden demographic collapses. Others contend that cannibalism was deeply embedded in the cultural and spiritual fabric of these societies. Ritualistic cannibalism, for instance, might have been employed as a means of communion with the divine, an attempt to channel the virtues of the deceased into the living, or even a method of exerting social control by reinforcing hierarchies through acts of violence. The dual nature of cannibalism, both as a survival mechanism and a cultural practice, reflects the intricate ways in which early humans navigated the challenges of existence, blending pragmatism with spirituality, violence with reverence. In addition to the archaeological and genetic evidence, the study of ancient cannibalism has been enriched by comparative analyses with modern instances of the practice. Although rare and universally condemned in contemporary society, documented cases of cannibalism in modern times, such as those that occurred during extreme famines or isolated survival scenarios, offer poignant parallels to the behaviours observed in ancient Europe. These modern instances underscore the idea that, under conditions of extreme stress, human beings can revert to primal instincts that defy modern ethical norms. However, the controlled and ritualistic nature of many prehistoric examples sets them apart from modern survival cannibalism, suggesting that ancient communities may have perceived and integrated these acts in ways that were deeply symbolic and culturally meaningful. The revelations about cannibalism among Europe as earliest inhabitants have not only reshaped our understanding of prehistory, but have also forced modern scholars to grapple with the uncomfortable reality that our ancestors were capable of acts that defy contemporary moral standards. This stark reminder of our shared past challenges the notion of linear human progress, 
highlighting instead a history marked by both brilliant ingenuity and profound brutality. It compels us to confront the paradoxical nature of humanity, a species capable of extraordinary creativity and compassion, yet also capable of unspeakable acts of violence and self-destruction. As researchers continue to excavate ancient sites and refine their analytical techniques, new evidence is constantly emerging that further complicates the picture of early European life. In some cases, discoveries once thought to be isolated incidents of cannibalism are now being re-evaluated in light of broader cultural practices. The integration of advanced DNA analysis, high-resolution imaging, and meticulous stratigraphic studies has allowed scientists to construct detailed timelines and cultural maps of prehistoric Europe. These maps reveal that cannibalistic practices were not confined to one region or one period, but were dispersed across a wide geographical area and persisted through multiple cultural transitions. This continuity suggests that, for many communities, cannibalism was not an aberration, but rather an accepted, albeit grim, component of their cultural repertoire. The profound implications of these findings extend beyond the realm of archaeology and anthropology. They force modern society to re-examine the roots of our own moral frameworks and to question how concepts of taboo, decency and humanity have evolved over millennia. The shock value of cannibalistic practices in early Europe serves as a powerful reminder that the boundaries between civilization and savagery are not fixed but are instead shaped by a complex interplay of environmental pressures, cultural beliefs, and historical contingencies. By studying these ancient practices in their proper context, we gain valuable insights into the adaptive strategies of our ancestors, insights that may yet inform our understanding of modern human behavior in times of crisis. In reflecting on this dark yet compelling chapter of human history, one cannot help but be struck by the resilience and adaptability of our species. The willingness of early Europeans to engage in practices that seem unthinkable today underscores a fundamental truth. Survival in a harsh and unpredictable world often demanded choices that defy modern sensibilities. Every incision on a bone, every calculated break to extract marrow, and every ritualistic act of defleshing tells a story of a time when the struggle for survival was not only a physical battle against the elements, but also a profound cultural journey into the very essence of what it means to be human. The legacy of these ancient practices lingers in our genetic makeup in the very fabric of modern European populations. The traces of Neanderthal DNA that persist in contemporary humans are a biological echo of a turbulent past, a past in which cannibalism, far from being merely an act of desperation, was interwoven with the spiritual and cultural identity of entire communities. Such revelations challenge us to reconsider the simplistic dichotomy of civilized versus barbaric, urging us instead to acknowledge the complex, often contradictory nature of human history. Moreover, these findings have ignited passionate debates among scholars regarding the interpretation of archaeological evidence. While some experts maintain that the presence of cut marks and other modifications on human bones provides irrefutable proof of cannibalism, others urge caution, suggesting that alternative explanations, such as secondary processing of remains for ritualistic or symbolic purposes, cannot be entirely ruled out. This ongoing discourse is a testament to the dynamic and ever-evolving nature of scientific inquiry, where every new discovery has the potential to upend established paradigms and to shed fresh light on the enigmatic past of our species. The study of cannibalism in early Europe ultimately serves as a mirror reflecting the duality of human nature. It is a story of survival and adaptation, of cultural expression and ritualistic fervor, and of a species caught between the primal instincts of its ancient ancestors and the moral frameworks that define modern civilization. As researchers continue to unearth new evidence from deep within the earth, each fragment of bone, each flake of stone tool, and each strand of ancient DNA contributes to a richer, more nuanced tapestry of our collective past, one that is as horrifying as it is awe-inspiring. In the dim light of prehistoric caves and the silent depths of ancient burial sites, the echoes of a long-forgotten world speak to us across the ages. They tell a tale of people who faced with unimaginable hardships resorted to practices that, while shocking by today's standards, 
were once a necessary part of life. Their actions, though often condemned by modern eyes, were the product of a time when survival depended on the ability to adapt to an ever-changing and often hostile environment. It is a legacy that continues to resonate today, challenging our preconceptions and inviting us to explore the dark, uncharted corners of human history with both scientific rigor and a willingness to confront the uncomfortable truths about our past. This journey into the depths of early European cannibalism is not merely an academic exercise. It is a profound exploration of the human condition. It forces us to ask difficult questions about what it means to be human, about the limits of cultural evolution, and about the ways in which our ancestors navigated the precarious line between civilization and savagery. As we piece together the fragments of their lives, we come to understand that the story of human evolution is not one of linear progress, but rather a complex mosaic of adaptation, conflict, and unexpected resilience, a mosaic in which even the most shocking practices have a place, however dark and disturbing. In the end, the revelations of prehistoric cannibalism in Europe are as much a story about the evolution of culture and ethics as they are about survival in the harshest of conditions. They remind us that the journey of human progress is marked by both light and shadow, and that the legacies of our ancestors, no matter how horrifying, are integral to the tapestry of our shared history. The scars etched into ancient bones serve as enduring symbols of the struggles and triumphs of early humans, offering a sobering yet captivating glimpse into a world where every act of violence, every ritualistic defleshing, and every calculated incision was a testament to the indomitable will to survive and to shape a future, however uncertain, out of the raw chaos of existence. As modern science continues to peel back the layers of time through innovative techniques and interdisciplinary research, the once hidden narratives of early Europeans are emerging with unprecedented clarity. The once dim light of prehistory now illuminates a past filled with both unimaginable cruelty and profound complexity, a past that forces us to confront the unsettling truth that the roots of our modern existence are entangled with practices that challenge our deepest moral convictions. In exploring this legacy, we are not merely uncovering the details of ancient diets and survival strategies, we are in essence peering into the heart of what it means to be human and grappling with the timeless question of how we choose to define ourselves in the face of a world that is as unforgiving as it is awe-inspiring.